Welcome to our video tutorial for our daily review question number 18. Question 18 is dealing with some geometry concepts, specifically asking us to find the area and volume of various shapes. Let's first remind ourselves of what area and volume are, and then we'll look at some methods that we could find the area of both rectangles and triangles and how to find the volume of rectangular prisms. Area is the space that a two-dimensional figure takes up. Volume is the space that a three-dimensional figure takes up. So you can notice that there are some similarities, but specifically when we're talking about area, we're talking about two-dimensional figures, and when we're talking about volume, we are talking about three-dimensional figures. Because of those dimensions, when we measure area or volume, we're going to measure them with slightly different units. Area will always be measured in units squared or to the second power. And you, you will see why we measure in units squared here in just a moment. And volume would be measured in units cubed. And some visual examples sometimes are helpful to remind us of what area and volume are. In this case, we are going to think about maybe a piece of paper or the top of a, uh, the top of a desk, uh, something that's a rectangular shape. And we would be thinking about how much space does that take up? In this case, if I've completely filled that paper in with purple paint, how much paint did it take to fill that in? That's what we're describing when we're talking about area. However, volume is a three-dimensional figure, so think about it more like a box. And in this case, you might think about it like a cereal box. How much cereal fit inside of that box so we would be filling that box up with something? Now let's go ahead and talk about how we can find the area of some rectangles first. If I start with a really simple rectangle, we'll call this rectangle one foot by one foot, it would be really easy to determine that the area of this rectangle is just one square foot. You can see that, that there is a square and each side of that square is one foot. Well, we could expand that rectangle and if I were to make one row, of those rectangles that was three feet long, we would see now that we had three square feet in that rectangle. We could continue to expand that and we could build that rectangle out. So now instead of being a one by one rectangle, it is now a three by four rectangle. And when we look at the dimensions of this rectangle, three feet by four feet, we can actually physically see, and you could count with your finger, that inside of that three foot by four foot rectangle, there are actually 12 one foot by one foot rectangular squares, uh, or squares inside of that box. And so in order to find the area of any rectangle, we can simply multiply the length times the width. In this case, three feet by four feet is going to equal 12 square feet. Let's take a look at this with another example, this time without those squares. If I have a rectangle that was 12 inches by five inches, you could physically imagine putting those squares inside of there, but we know that we're gonna find that by multiplying the length and the width. Five inches times 12 inches will equal 60 inches squared. And that gives us our formula. The length times the width is equal to the area of a rectangle. Now, sometimes we might wanna also find the area of a triangle. Well, one of the nice things about a triangle is that triangles are related to rectangles. Let's go ahead and look at how a triangle might relate to this rectangle. Simply by splitting this in half, drawing a diagonal line across, we can see that 
all rectangles can be made up of exactly two equal sized triangles. That means if I asked you to find the area of a triangle, um, uh, in this case, the triangle that was made by splitting that rectangle in half, what we would wanna do is we would want to multiply the length and the width of that rectangle and then divide that by two. So five inches times 12 inches divided by two is equal to 30 inches squared. In this case, we're going to use some slightly different vocabulary. Instead of using length and width, we're going to say base and height, but we are still describing the same dimensions of our rectangle or triangle. So our formula for the area of a triangle is base times height and divide it by two, and that will give us the area of any triangle. Next, let's go ahead and look at how we might find volume. This time, I'm gonna use that same 12 inch by five inch uh, rectangle that we had, but this time I'm going to give it a third dimension. Just like the 12 inch by five inch rectangle would have had 60 square inches, if I add one inch of height there, and you can imagine cubes, we would end up with 60 cubic inches. Now, I could continue to build the height of that rectangle up. So if I build that height of that rectangle up so that it's now 80, excuse me, so that it's now eight total inches high, we would have eight layers of 60 cubic inches. And so that would be uh, 60 cubic inches times eight inches would equal uh, four, 480 cubic inches. In this case, um, that gives us a formula for the volume of any rectangular prism. And that formula is always going to be the length of the item times the width of the item times the height of the item. And that will always give us the volume. And in this case, it's we're only talking about rectangular prisms. Hopefully that gives you a good idea about how to work with area and volume, uh, as well as how to label the units of measure for all of those.